Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is it on? We're good? How's that? All right. I'll, I'll use my shop voice. <laughs> uh, this morning, we're very pleased to have with us uh, Pastor Carolyn Mouchin. And uh, her and her husband, 20, 25 years ago, were the pastors at Trinity over in Spooner. And thanks, Pat, for reaching out to Carolyn so she can join our rotation. And uh, they live up in Superior, and her and her husband, five days a week, chase around a 15-year-old grandson. 15 months. I'm sorry, 15 months. <laughs> 15 <laughs> I told you to get a kick out of that one. So, um, Just a reminder, during the offering, uh, Vern is going to be singing a solo, and the grouchy pastor, Mary, has asked that we kind of listen to what Vern is singing. So I think we're good. Pat? Oh, we're not quite good yet. All right, everybody, repeat after me. I love new music. I love new music. Great, because this morning we're going back to uh, setting one in the LW, and you know, <laughs> it is good to be here this morning, and uh, Pat and I go back a long time, a long time, because <laughs> we're, uh, Pat at least is a lot younger than he looks. Not anymore. So it's good to be with you this morning. Um, please stand and forgive me if I make a mistake about standing and sitting um, and join me in make me a servant. Okay. All right. Please join me in the confession of sin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be versed, to make distinctions among ourselves, we place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us sin. Draw near to us with grace in time of need, and turn to us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sins no more. By grace you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Oh, we and me. 
You draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding, servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. out of our normal repertoire things that we do is from the musical Godspell. Um, and it's a song that gets sung right before uh, Jesus' crucifixion. So it's called Beautiful City.
Good morning. First reading comes from Jeremiah, chapter 11, verses 18 through 20. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading comes from James chapter 3 thir- verses 13 through 4 and chapter 3 I'm chapter 4 verses 3 7 through 8 who is wise and understanding among you show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom but if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not be boastful and false to the truth such wisdom does not come down from above but is earthly and unspiritual and devilish For where there is envy and self-ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who take peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do, not have, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel this morning is from Mark 9, beginning with the 30th verse. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He didn't want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man who is to be betrayed into human hands is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was on his and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first 
must be last and whoever and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. For the last three weeks and today, we've been hearing from the letter from James. And he's talking about discipline, specifically the discipline of bridling our tongues. We might say, watch your mouth. The discussion starts in James 1 when he said, if any of you think you are righteous and you do not bridle your tongue, your religion is, worthy, is worthless. I'm pretty sure that James wasn't talking about camels here. And I don't know of any devices that bridle the tongue of politicians. So I'm assuming that we're talking about horses. And I'm thinking most of you have never bridled a horse or maybe even seen a bridle. So I went to the mall in Duluth and I bought a bridle with the tags still on it because I need to return it. These puppies are expensive. Anyway, these are not a great thing for horses. If you kids, I see here would like to come see it closer, you sure can. This is a bridle. All right. And this is the bit. Come on up. This is the bit. Now the bit in the bridle that controls the horse, have you ever been on a horse? No, okay. Well, this thing goes, I'm not going to put it in my mouth, this goes in the horse's mouth, okay, and it goes, it, this fits on the tongue, and it goes way back in the mouth. They have a place right here that's sensitive. And if you pull on the, these are the reins, if you pull on the reins, this puts pressure on the horse's mouth, and it makes them stop to get rid of the pressure, okay? So when James is talking about put a bridle on your tongue, he's not just saying, watch out. He's saying, pull back on those instincts. Okay? Thanks for coming up. Now, what I know about horses and bridles comes from living in Tennessee when I was in high school, and my family raised quarter horses as a hobby. And horses are a lot like people in some ways. They are uh, shaped by their history, just like us. If they've been mistreated, they have baggage, just like us, and hurt, just like people. And one of the first things I learned about horses is just hanging out in the barn doesn't make you have a relationship with a horse. If they don't know you, do not walk behind them, or you're very likely to get kicked. And they're very likely not going to feel bad about that. <laughs> Horses, like our egos, have their own agenda. And they are very willful, and they are very stubborn sometimes. We had a Palomino mare, that means a yellow horse, who seemed to be very passive, but she was really tricky. And before I knew anything about horses, when we first moved to Tennessee, my father said to me, why don't you take Lady down to the pond, give her a good drink? And she's so passive, you don't need a bridle, just throw a halter on her. Now a halter is just a rope tied around the nose, and one rein, 
and you can just lay the rein on either side of the horse's neck, and if they like you, and they're in a good mood, and they're not ornery, they'll go whichever way you want them to go. So thinking that this horse was well used to humans, I jumped on bareback and took her all the way down the hill to the pond. She had a flair for drama. She was not an old horse, but as soon as I jumped on her back, she started walking like she was nearly dead. <laughs> oh. Oh. In other words, I don't want to go here. She was very clear. So we got down to the pond, and Lady headed right out into the pond and threw me off. <laughs> she then kicked up her heels and ran up the hill like a spring filly and left me in the mud. Clearly, she won. I was absolutely furious. I had murder in my heart. Thinking about that horse running up the hill and how furious and humiliated I was, perhaps is a metaphor for what it feels like when anger and pride take over and run away with our common sense. And perhaps the tug of war between horse and rider is a lot like the tug of war between uh, God's will and our will. In James 4, 1, we read, those conflicts and disputes among you, what are they about? Do they not come from your cravings that are within you? In verse 7, James goes on to say, submit to God. Resist the devil. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. So the disciples in the gospel this morning were arguing from their egos about who's the greatest. Like a horse race, they each wanted to be first. They each wanted to be the greatest. Some horses are so competitive they will run until they drop to be in the lead. Like people, some would just as soon lie down and not run at all and sit in the daisies. Make no mistake, partnering with a horse like partnering with God takes a relationship. They have to know that you won't hurt them, and it helps if they know you have an apple in your pocket. We like those treats. And some horses have this trick of putting the bit over their teeth so that they're not feeling the pressure in the back of their mouth and leaving you completely out of control. What tricks do you use to get your ego and your anger under control? How do you recognize times when that little voice within you just wants to be first, be better, be at the head table, the first in line, the most important in the room. Jesus said, whoever wants to be first should be a servant and should welcome little children. Why? Because little children had no status in that culture. In other words, the path to greatness was through humility. Go to the end of the line for the sake of the other. Try signaling that to a high-strung horse. The whole discussion, then, about bridling the tongue is really about so much more than the words that come out of our mouth. Jesus said, what's the problem is what's inside of us. If we are egotistical and at war with the notion of submitting to God, it will slip out in our speech and actions. The fight between ego and God is the oldest fight in the book, and it goes back to Cain and Abel. The cause of violence is refusing to submit to God. 
Conflicts and fights come from our inner struggles from wanting to be God rather than wanting to serve God. And it's exactly in that inner life when you hear language about God transforming us. It is exactly there that God can change your life. Self-help is not enough, no matter how hard you pull back on the bridle. We can be in very real danger when hurt egos lead to the anger that turns our brains off. Once I foolishly attempted to ride a very large horse I didn't know when I was in college in St. Peter, Minnesota. And this horse um, was used to a very large woman about twice my size who was heavy handed. But my ego, you know, got the best of me. I know horses. I've been riding horses for four years. So the horse started off, put the bit in front of his teeth, and he ran full out several miles from St. Peter across the highway to Kosota, Minnesota. I had bloody hands from pulling on the reins of this horse. It was a highway where I could have been killed. I was terrified. That's what anger and pride can do to us. When suddenly they take over and the bridle and the bit become rather useless and suddenly a power much larger than you are is in control of what's going on. Have you been there? Those moments when perhaps you dump a list of 20 years worth of grievances on your spouse or your friend? and you're not realizing how out of bounds you are until you see them walk out the door. And then you have the taste of bitterness and regret. And all you want to do because of your pride and your ego is turn into a fire-breathing dragon you hardly recognize as yourself and all you want to do is burn things up. If you have then tasted bitter regrets afterward, you have just experienced what the text calls being double-minded. When people are double-minded and they claim to be Christian and other Christians see them doing something that is clearly not in line with what we think of as Christian behavior, it disappoints, it discourages, and it sends a red flag up that says, maybe there's nothing to this Christian stuff. Many years ago, after a very heated church council meeting, I saw, this was at Trinity and Spooner, and he's dead, so I can talk about it. I saw an 80-year-old council member in the parking lot after a heated council meeting flip the bird at another council member. I was pretty sure this was sort of not okay. (laughs) I'm pretty sure it was crossing the line. It was discouraging. It made me sad. His ego had taken over, and I wondered, Why am I doing this job? Because you see, when it's our job to lift up Christian behavior and you see something cruel and angry, well, it's discouraging. For the sake, then, of a kinder, gentler world and to help restore Christian integrity in the public view, it might be a good time for each of us to ask ourselves, what is acceptable to God? How can we model that for others and for our children? How can we learn to speak the truth in love for the sake of the whole body of Christ? 
then ask God to. Amen. Join me in the Apostles' Creed. I don't know if you stand, so stand if you want to. <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life of us. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Loving God, you welcome all at your table of grace. Instill in your church a spirit of humility and curiosity that we embrace all who seek you. We pray especially for ministries of hospitality and faith. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God, you shape the world so there is more than enough for all. Curb our habits of overuse and guide us toward more sustainable sources of energy. Hear us. Gracious God, your peace brings justice and solidarity. Encourage peace among peoples, tribes, and nations. Heal divisions in our country and local communities, that together we might cooperate for the good of all. Hear us. Faithful God, you draw near to all who are in need. Bring healing and wholeness to all who suffer. Transform economic, political, and social systems that oppress vulnerable people, especially systems of structural racism and generational poverty. Hear us, O God. 
Transforming God, you accompany all through changes and transitions. Help us to see where you are calling this community to new ways of living the gospel promise. Assure us that even as change brings loss, it also brings hope and life. Hear us, God. Merciful God, you embrace us on our final pilgrimage from this life. Accompany all who have died, console those who mourn, and at the last, show us the way to eternal life in you. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust these and all prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us turn and give a sign of God's peace to each other.
Please join me in the offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our love, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus welcomes you all to the table. Come, here is your God. body of Christ. Stay with
Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and be at peace with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, Pat, do you want to make some announcements or does anybody have an announcement? You guys. All right. Come on up. Hi. I'm just kind of making another, I don't know if this is on or not, but I have a loud voice. Um, the October meeting, uh, Sandy Fisher will be in the fellowship hall for their, their monthly, to get their month set up. And also for all the other shepherding groups, if we could just quickly meet in a fellowship, grab yourself a coffee and come over and maybe we can just catch up and see if there's any questions and kind of get, see if we can get lined up ahead of time kind of for the coming months that are ahead. There is a sign-up sheet out in the Narthex because some of them, uh, a lot, of, several of the months are still in need of people that are were willing to help for that month. And so if the month you're in for some reason isn't convenient, make sure you contact whoever that person is that is the convener for that month before you change. But anybody else that this is a great way to meet a small group of friends and have some actual time to sit and visit with them. And everybody is willing to join, and we love everybody. You don't have to be a member. You don't have, you can just be somebody that comes occasionally and comes and visits with our church. But we'd love to take you and be a part of some month. So thank you. Hi, one more reminder about the Welka Annual Fall Retreat. This will be the last week that tickets will be sold. We need to get our numbers in for the wonderful lunch they provide us. Um, we'll have a planning meeting Monday morning at 10 o'clock if anyone has some great ideas of what you'd like to do at this retreat. 
and we'll also be doing a collection for the community referral agency that houses women or children in crisis. Um, we have a list of items they need and we'll have a speaker coming to the retreat to talk about what they do and accept our, our donations very willingly. So hopefully you can come to the retreat. It's on October 7th at Luther Park and bring a friend. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> the Guild is, um, I don't know if you all know what the Guild does, but we do quite a bit at the church here. And we are looking for someone to help Brenda when she goes off to, um, out to the, uh, her winter retreat. And, and Dan goes with her, so we, we lose our really good baker and bread baker and we have somebody that can help a little bit a couple months but we're looking for a couple extra people to help with the bread baking and and which is part of communion so give me a call if you can and um, we're looking for someone before she leaves <laughs> and she's leaving the first of november so so think it over in your hearts and, and come and join come and join us. Thank you. I'm Lizzie and this is Ellie. And this summer we had the chance of going to the ELCA National Youth Gathering in New Orleans. It was a great experience where we got to meet a lot of people from around the country and see God in a new way. So every evening there was a mass gathering where everybody would gather in a stadium. They would have bands that would play songs about God and all 16,000 people in the stadium would sing together. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. <laughs> they also had speakers who would talk about their experiences with God and how we can follow the path of God. The gathering was nothing like I've ever experienced before. And it's a very good experience for kids to learn more about God. So thank you for helping us be able to go to New Orleans for this gathering.
merciful, bless you and keep you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and follow Jesus. Raise horses, so this was an appropriate sermon for them. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm going to turn this off. Sure.